70 years ago, the feast of the guardian angels, today's feast, Opus Dei was, so to speak, born. 50 years ago, Opus Dei came to England. So these are reasons enough to praise and thank God for the work that has been done in and through its members. Glory God in excelsis Deo. It was on this feast day, 1928, as already said, when the founder of Opus Dei understood that he was to urge men, and indeed, of course, women as well, in all walks of life, to seek holiness and carry out an apostolate in the midst of the world through the exercise of their profession or trade without a change of life. No change of life, but surely always a constant change of heart. But already those words, 70 years ago, anticipated the Vatican Council's decree on the place and the role of the laity in the world. the laity to live out their lives and to grow in holiness. The universal call to holiness in order to be equipped to be able to carry out the mission of the church the Holy Father has often said that the Vatican Council was in part the preparation for the celebration of the year 2000, the holy year, the great jubilee. And surely the Holy Spirit is calling us in our day to a greater degree of holiness, to deepen our spiritual lives. And it has been the role of Opus Dei to provide support and guidance on that road to holiness. And we need to remind ourselves again and again that the celebration of the year 2000 is the celebration of the Incarnation, when the Word became flesh, when God became man. I would like to speak about two texts from the New Testament. And I find as I prepare for the Holy Year and speak about it, they reoccur again and again to my thinking. I like to think too to my prayer. But go back to that seen in the synagogue at Nazareth when our Lord had read from the prophet Isaiah 
how the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. And then he, the prophet showed various signs to show the presence of the Spirit. At the end, he rolled up the scroll, handed it over to the servant of the synagogue, and then we read, all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. And for my part, in our preparation to celebrate the great jubilee, I would take that as the theme. All eyes fixed on him. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And then that other text from St. John's Gospel. When we read, this is eternal life, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Not to know Jesus Christ in an academic manner, not to know all about him. Do this in memory of me, but to know him and to be involved with him because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. I preach these days those simple thoughts. All eyes in the synagogue are fixed on him. Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Jesus Christ, whom to see is to see the Father. Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, has to be at the very center of the life of every individual. And in these months that come, and the months that follow the preparation, to discover Christ in his word in the gospel, to discover Christ in the blessed sacrament, to be involved with Christ in the great mystery of Christ, which is the mass, sharing as we do in this celebration in his death and his resurrection. It's the feast of the guardian angels. They must have a mention. We know little about the angels. But there's one thought which is inspiring. Angels see God face to face. And for my part, that's always been their importance, whatever their role in our lives. They see God face to face. They see him in his majesty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bow down and adore him, singing holy, holy, holy. But they see him also, as St. John in his prayer saw him, God is love. So they saw him in his majesty. They see him in that intimacy. 
which is the love of God for each one of us. You, members of Opus Dei, you have a grave responsibility to respond to the call to holiness. Use the help and assistance that you can get. But always, not for ourselves, but for mission. To carry the gospel into the world in which we live. That's what the decree on the laity the Vatican Council said that I believe is what your founder saw.